I wanted to make this little video here to try and help people through some of the issues they're having with their chair. So last we've left that during lecture in class, the chair should have looked like this. If it doesn't, you'll need to get to this point. Uh, and I'm sure someone could help you because I believe everyone who were able to get to this point knows how to get to this point, uh, especially following the lecture and following the video online. I really think that video would have been very helpful. So a couple of things you should, when you click on the legs, realize that whatever you do to one leg, you do to the, all of them. If by any chance they're not looking like this, if by any chance when you click on them, they don't look like this, but rather maybe look like, like this, it's not been made into a component. If it's a component, it's going to look like this when you click on it once. And then if you do anything to that leg like this, you're not actually affecting the leg. In other words, if I draw uh, a line here like this, I'm not really affecting the leg. If I draw the same line here, for example, notice how I can select this portion and that portion separately, right? Where this one, I, I can't because I'm drawing on the outside of the component. So the idea of an, a, a component um, and, and that the leg needs to be like this is very important for uh, the second part of, of doing the, the, the legs. So I, I hope that makes sense. Um, again, how do I make a component? Well, uh, what you should do is if, if your legs all look like this, or worse, if they're stuck to the bottom of the seat. In other words, I should be able to select the seat uh, and delete it and still have four legs sitting in there because these legs should not have been occurring inside the seat. You know what I'm saying? The seat was a component. Again, you click on the seat and the world should be turning green or gray or something. That tells me that now I'm in this component and the component should only be the seat and the back. And the reason the back is there is because the back was made from the seat bottom. So I, I make sure everyone is kind of aware of, of kind of how these layering things lay out. All right. So let's say all our chair legs look like this. Well, that's just not going to do any good. So you would have to, uh, you might as well just delete the other legs, let's say. If they, if they look like this, delete the other legs. Um, and then you would uh, select this leg. And right now the best way to do it is just do a big window like this or to triple click on it. Make sure you get the bottom, the sides, and the top. Right click make component, uh, and then call it chair leg. And then you'll have to copy to the other locations. And copying is using the move tool and then tapping the control key. And you can grab both legs together by holding down the, selecting one and holding down the control key and selecting the other one. Now this you only have to do if your legs are not components already. If they're already like this, then you're, you're probably just fine. And also, notice we made one component. We didn't make four separate components. We made one component and then copied it. And we copied it using the Move tool, tapping the Control key. All right. So if I use the Move tool and I tap the Control key, um, it creates a, a copy. It creates a, it, it, it'll, it'll be a little plus next to the move move uh, symbol. All right. All right. So let's start with the two pieces. So hopefully, hopefully your chair is all set up right. Hopefully your chair looks just fine. So the first part it was to get the seat to have a little bevel. So if I double click on the seat bottom, uh, the world should turn green, right? The, like this green gray look. Uh, and it asks you to make a little line from the front to something like this, something like that. Just, you know, a line across here. Notice I'm inside the component. I have a bounding box. The bounding box automatically occurs when I double click into a component. But if I click away, I'm out of the bounding box. Everything turns white. I click on it once and I just have, I see the, the perimeter of it, double click, I'm inside it. So you need to be inside for this to work. If you draw a line outside, it's as if you're drawing a line on the outside of a glass box. All right. So again, the video clearly tells you the, the steps and the lecture also shows you the steps. You, you pick the path by picking each edge or the surface bounding them. Well, in this case, the surface bounding them is the top of the seat. One click on the surface and you're selecting the entire perimeter. The uh, seat should be complete like this. If there's any extra lines in here, you got to get rid of those extra lines. Uh, and you might have extra lines left over because when we made this, you may not have erased everything fully. 
So I selected the surface. I got the path, right? Select the path. Then you select the follow me tool. And then you go ahead and select this little triangular wedge that we just made. You should be able to see, be able to select one or the other, right? Click. And that's it. It should come all the way around and be nice and, and, and sharp like that. What might have happened is that the bottom of the cylinders now are not touching the seat anymore. They're floating in space. Uh, and so to make it right, I'm going to get out of this component. In other words, I'm in the component now. I'm in the component of the seat and I need to get out to fix, to do changes with the cylinders. So click out and now I'm outside. I should be able to click on these cylinders like this, right? And they're all should be components, just like the legs should be components. If they're not components, you're going to have to make them components first. As a matter of fact, that'd be one of the first things you should do is make sure that all your parts are what they should be. <clears throat> so if I double click inside the cylinder, notice what happened. All the rest of the world turns green again. So now I know I am in this component. I see the bounding box around it. And now I can go underneath and I can do the push pull command and push pull it down. And it just goes down however far it goes. It, they're kind of overlapping a little bit, but for this particular model, that, that's okay. It, it, it'll be fine. When, the, you know, when you render it, it'll be all right. All right, so we got the seat taken care of. Now we got to work on the legs. So I believe the, the way the video goes is we want to put some tape measure lines on the legs so that we stay within certain parameters. I would go inside the leg by double clicking. I'm now inside the leg component. I can tell I'm inside the leg component because the bounding box shows up and the whole world turns green. So if I zoom in, the lecture says I need to create some tape measure lines. And this is more for your sake um, than, than absolute necessity. Um, but for this next steps to work easily, it, we, I found that these little tape measure lines are really helpful. Again, it, it, once, you get, once you get a bit of better gist of the follow me tool, uh, this won't be quite as necessary. So T for tape measure, or hit the tape measure tool. Your cursor should become a tape measure. And the first thing we're supposed to go is from this edge, click, go across the face of that front, and type in 5 slash 8, and press Enter. Then go in from the outside edge again, and go across 1 slash 8, Enter. Now we've got two little tape measure lines. Now, notice that they also show up on the other legs. Because this is a component, whatever happens to one leg happens to all of them. If by any chance you don't see that, you might be drawing outside the leg still and you've not gotten inside the component. You go inside the component by double clicking. So then the lecture says, and the, the video I sent earlier says, just to draw a line on the edge here. This is the front of the, of the leg. Start so a line on the edge here, click and go in a distance up to the, the first line or whatever distance. And then you can start kind of making your own straight lines. So this is using the line tool. And I'm trying to stay on. Now, if, if I ever get out, out of it, like right here, and, and I, I think I'm doing okay. Well, wait a second. Look what happened. See that? I, I, I got off the plane. Not only that, but I'm not supposed to go past this line anyways. The, the whole idea, so I just, just go select this, delete, select, delete, get rid of those lines. You, the, the whole idea is to keep your shape within these two pair of lines. All right, so I don't want to go past this. So I, I, and as it is, I went past it. So that, I'm going to go back to that line again, line tool. And I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to, you know, kind of play around a little bit. I'm using my scroll wheel to zoom in and out. done. Once I get to the bottom, once I get to the bottom edge, whatever edge I want, I should be able to select one side or the other fully of this. Okay, so here I click on this side. Just notice this edge gets fully out. This one gets fully out, right? I believe in the lecture it also said to make sure if there is some at least some curves in it to use an arc. So I will use the arc command. I'll click a point, click another point, and maybe make a bulge. And maybe do one over here. Again, click, click, and then go go in. I want to make sure I stay on the surface. Did you notice before as I was doing this? It, it seemed to want to do that. Yeah, okay. Well, I, that, that's not going to apply, okay? So, 
So if anything happens, it's weird to undo. Now, I also said to get rid of these lines, erase these lines. So I just use the eraser tool and erase the lines here and here. Uh, I could also erase the um, those extra guidelines. I don't need them. As long as I can click on the two different surfaces, right, then I'm good. And as far as I'm concerned, that's good. So how do we do this? Follow me. So make sure you're not clicking anything now. Click away. Like if you if you double click uh, to get in the component, but if you click out once, you'll get out of the components. Just double click to go back in. So <clears throat> you have to click the path first. Well, the path is going to be the bottom of the leg. Then click the follow me tool, and then click the outside portion of the leg. And all of a sudden, there, there should be your, your leg design, however it is. So sometimes, some things happen when you use follow me, um, when, especially if you have a very ornate shape. Here's, here's one example of an issue you might encounter. You have like this little tab at, at the side of your piece. You're like, what, where'd that come from? Uh, and sometimes what you need to do is just select the outermost line and make sure, you, okay, make, if you click and delete and the whole thing disappears, you're outside the component. <laughs> and I almost did that. Double click to get in the component, then you can select that line and delete it. If for some reason part of the shape goes away too, you might need to select it and go intersect faces with model, right? Select it, right click, intersect faces with model, and then see if that solves the issue. Um, if not, you might need to maybe draw some lines to break it too. So I mean, there's some things to think about if it goes away, and I can certainly help you with that if that's the only thing you've got outstanding. Other times you might see like a bluish or a grayish color. Like, wait, what is that? You know, I didn't. What, What's going on is that for some reason the pro now that that is normal because that's just it's just the shadow of the top here, but this one is is always going to be this blue this blue tone or a gray tone so we know there's a problem. Um, SketchUp has a front and a back face. This is actually the back face of the model appearing. So we, we want to get rid of that, and make it only the front face. So I'm going to go and double click. I'm now inside the component again. I'm going to select that surface, right click, reverse faces. This is one of the things I think that we've we've talked about or I asked you to look at a video about. Um, and so you want to always make sure you have the front face visible. On shapes that are curved like this, it becomes pretty problematic. If so if I double click, I'm back inside the component. If I select that surface and do right click, reverse faces, what? Well, what happened? The, the program understands the piece as if it's one element. So <clears throat> Uh, we, that won't help us. We need to actually show the different parts of the curve. So if you go to View Hidden Geometry, now we're seeing the different parts of the curve, right? And now I can select these and right-click, Reverse Faces, Reverse Faces, Reverse Faces. And you can see that as they were done with this, they were done there, right? On all this. So whatever you do to one component, you do to all of them. If you try to do reverse faces here, you won't have that option if you're outside the component. If you're outside the component, you won't have that option. And then to get those lines out to be visible again, you go to View, Hidden Geometry, and take the lines out. Last but not least, your chair should be on the origin. So if you need to, select the whole chair by just a big rectangular selection, and then use the Move tool and, and move the chair to the origin. Hopefully that clarifies the steps. I'm trying to think of all the, the problems that uh, people have been asking me about um, with, their, with, their, with their chair. Your chair needs to be done to this point at the start of class tomorrow um, so you can do the next assignment where we will make a table to match the chair. But you need the chair to start with. And the chair needs to be set up like this.